Hey, Oaken students, Ben Asman here. Today we're gonna to be talking about identifying a molecule using IR spectroscopy. Let's get to it. As we discussed in previous classes, uh, the way the IR uh, spectrometry works is that you shine light uh, in the infrared zone through a, a compound or um, reflect it off of it and in doing so, um, if you have the right frequency of light, it will hit a molecule and it will, will cause it to vibrate. But it won't cause all the other molecules to vibrate. But if you have a different frequency of light, that will hit a different molecule that will cause it to vibrate uh, where the first one won't. Now, in reality, it's, there's more complications to it. There's different kinds of vibration. There's the vibrations which are stretches, and the vibrations which are like bends, and I, and I swear to God, this is a new crazy dance. But uh, there's all of these different ones, and if you, if you look in the description, I put a link, there's a bunch of really interesting ones. But uh, when it comes to actually doing it, first thing you have to do is know each one of the things. Some of you have seen already. Now, in general, what we have here is we have the OH stretch, okay, the OH stretch, uh, all of these pretty much is going to be stretches. The OH is going to be between uh, 36, 50, and 3, a, a thousand. Remember, there's more than one way to have an OH, and alcohol is just one of them. Uh, but it's going to be broad. It's going to be fat, and it's going to be pretty big. Uh, nitrogens, uh, uh, amines, okay, two kinds of amines. Uh, we have uh, amines with two hydrogens and one hydrogen, both from basically the same region as the alcohol. The just a little bit higher, they're only to 33,000 uh, uh, at the lowest. Uh, and that's of course in wave numbers because it's, it's everything is measured in wave numbers which is analogous to energy or frequency. Now in general, uh, for, the C, for the NH2, uh, you have two peaks and for the NH you can have one peak. Hey, notice that all of these are basically the same area. We'll get to that back in a second. Um, then for all the different kind of CH bonds, uh, you have single bonded CHs which are going to be quite low. Uh, you can have, of course, multiple of any of these on a single molecule. Uh, but you have, uh, for the single bonded, it's below 3,000. For double bonded, it's between 3,000 and 3,150. And for uh, triple bond, that's, that's going to be between uh, 3,150 and 3,000. 300, uh, and all these are sharp, okay? Uh, same thing goes for carbonyls. Carbonyls, uh, any CO uh, double bonds, uh, and there's quite a variety of those. Uh, you're gonna see from 1880 to 1630. Um, for nitriles, uh, remember that's a C and triple bond. You're gonna see those in the middle here. That's 2260 uh, to uh, 2215. Now I'm gonna also include a link to this on the screen now or in the description down below um, uh, with all of the information uh, for a more specific, so you don't have to necessarily run back to the video to see these numbers, but a PDF with all these uh, numbers already on them. Uh, and then you have all the things that are a combination of multiple things. You have carboxylic acids, which have a CO bond, and that's usually around 3,000. That's why I said that not all OHs are alcohols, but you have to watch out for it. And then um, you have the carbonyl at uh, around 1800 to 1650. That number is the specific ranges for um, carb uh, specifically for carboxylic acids. Now, of course, all of these are kind of like eh, a variety of different things can change uh, these depending on um, uh, the strength of the bond of the things around them can change these a little bit. Uh, but these are the general ranges. Aldehydes, you will see as well, it has a combo. It has kind of three-ish peaks. One which is the normal kind of uh, uh, CH, um, uh, the CH uh, single bond, that's this one. One that's an additional that's only for aldehydes, that's from 2780 to uh, uh, 2680. That's usually very weak. These are very small ones. And then you have the normal carbonyl. Uh, it's just a little lower at 1565 uh, to 1645. And then finally, the weirdest one of them all is the aromatics. If you have an aromatic, you would expect to see uh, a, the CH aromatic here. Now that's this analogous to a double bond because that's basically what a double bond is. It's not exactly the same, but it's going to be in that similar region of around uh, uh, 3,150 to 3,000 
in that middle region, once again, from 3,000 to 3,150, that's for the, C, the, the CH part of the uh, double bonded one. Then you're going to have all the way down here, uh, you're going to usually see four of these. Sometimes you might see three or two of them. You kind of have to fudge around. But these kind of four peaks, which are low down, 1,600, 1,580, uh, that one in particular is usually hard to see, uh, 1,500 and 1,440. Uh, and then a lot of times with aromatic, you will also see these uh, three or four guys, which are tiny, 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 those above usually, uh, those are in the, two, uh, the low 2000s, but you might see those as well. Um, those are usually a good indication as well. If you have all of these, that you have an aromatic compound, uh, usually specifically a, um, a C6 uh, aromatic compound, like a benzene ring. Um, Basically, you notice here that almost nothing here is below 1400 or even in the 1400s mostly. All of that is called the fingerprint region and all of that we don't have to worry about. That if you're a Grandmaster Pro can identify any molecule from just that. But uh, personally, I can't and uh, the amount of people in the world who can still do that is diminishing every day. Because uh, there's better ways of doing this. Okay, so how do you actually do this on, uh, in the actual procedure. So if you look here, I have two different examples, one of which is a reaction, one of which is a, you have a list and you have to figure out which one, both very common re, uh, questions that might come up with IR. In the real world, in actual lab, IR is used as functional group identification in addition to other techniques, some of which you will learn next time. But at the moment, here's our thing. So we have here our spectrum with our reaction and looking at it, we want to ask ourselves basically these questions. Here's our functional groups. These are our lists. Okay, we have OHs, NHs, CHs, uh, CAO, double bonds, whatever. And is it a no or is it a maybe? It's never a yes quite because you're not quite sure which one it is. So looking here at our very first example, we have here 3,080. 3,080 sharp, uh, uh, we have uh, 29, uh, 2980, we have 2960, and we have 1750. Okay, so let's look here. Alcohol. Do we see an alcohol group right there? No. That's, that's an important piece of information. We do not have a alcohol group for our first one. I'm going to do the first one green, the second one red. But uh, we do not have our, an alcohol group for the second one. Do we have a nitrogen? No. We, we don't have a nitrogen. We don't have a, uh, an NH2. Definitely. We got those out of the way. We know it's definitely not that. It's not... Um, now, uh, CH single bonds? Single bonds does happen in this region. Now, we have multiple of them. That could indicate, um, uh, most likely, is multiple slightly different ones for whatever reason. So, yes, we in fact do mo there could be there. Now, this one's quite low. We might say, oh, that might be an aldehyde. Well, we don't know. Do we have anything else to support that piece of information? Maybe not, okay. And now we're gonna look here. Do we have uh, uh, aromatic CHs or, in other words, CH double bonds? And yeah, 3380 is a CH double bond. So there definitely could be a CH double bond. Double bond, could there be a triple bond? No, there's nothing there quite low enough to do that. Nitrile, no, nothing there, can't be a nitrile. Carbonyl, yeah, that could be a carbonyl. And then CH aromatics, no, nothing there, there's not enough of them, it's not that. So that already tells us that our group is probably not going to include uh, all of these guys, but probably does. Now, if you know this reaction, you can already anticipate what this should be. This should eventually be something like this, at which point we would expect to see a double bond, we would expect to see single bonded CHs, and we expect to see a carbonyl. Now, we said maybe an aldehyde. We have no other supporting information for an aldehyde, so it's probably not that. And so when we report it, we would report it probably like this. As for our second problem, okay, we want to rule things out. Here's, here's, oh, could it be this one, could it be this one, could it be that one. Well, does it have an OH? Well, that definitely could be an OH. That could be an OH. Or it could be an NH. Um, that, that doesn't really. But is it an NH2? No, there's only one hump. So that's probably not an NH2. 
But looking here, OH, okay, that could be NH2. Well, we already said that's not that one. So here we go. It's not this one. That's good to know. And then an OH. So can this actually be an NH? Not really. Okay, this can't be an NH because uh, there is no possibility for an NH here. Okay, then uh, 3,045. Um, 3, uh, okay, so let's go to the next one. See, single bonds. Is that, is that low enough to be a single bond? Not really. No, that's in the double bond region. So this is a definite no, and a, there's a maybe there for that one. Uh, now, down here, looking at this, we do have 1,600. So is it could be, sorry, the next one on the list here, uh, we have a triple bond. Also, there's nothing there quite high enough, so it's definitely not that. There's nothing there, so it's not that. Carbonyl, uh, well, there's 1,600. 1,600 is just about a carbonyl, but then there's also 1,580 and 1,450 and maybe something small there. So that could be that. Now, looking here at our different options, well, it obviously isn't going to be a carbonyl for two reasons. One, you have a second option of what this P could be, but also there is no carbonyl as an option. What there definitely could be is we see two pieces of information that support aromatic and definitely an alcohol. So this does not have an aromatic, therefore we can eliminate this and we know it's that one. Now, how do you report this? When you report this, you have a report form. On the report form, you're going to write the exact number given, or if not given a number, you're going to estimate it to the nearest whole number. And then uh, you're going to give is the type of bond it is. Is it an OH? Is it an alcohol OH or is it a carbonyl OH? Is it an NH? Okay, is that an amine? Is it a CH? Okay, was that a double bond, triple bond? Is that, in other words, is it an alkane, an alkene, or an alkyne? Single, double, or triple bond? Tell me what it is. Then all of these are stretches. Uh, if you ever do this more professionally, you will have some bends as well. Um, and, and then um, is this uh, weak? It's very short. Is it medium in the middle? Strong? It's all the way to the bottom. Or I also want to know, is this broad? Most peaks are sharp. Is this a broad peak? You can tell me that as well in this column here. Go ahead, give it a try.